session we will talk about uh, the important topics of class 12th geography and crt and why they are important for upsc civil service exam perspective and yesterday uh, we had covered one of the class 12 geography and crt that deal, dealt with human geography demography and uh, that was called as the fundamentals of human geography and today uh, i am going to deal with uh, india that is people and economy so that is also a very important ncert for upsc civil service exams perspective and then we are done with the geography ncert series okay so do subscribe to an academy and uh, like stay tuned for awesome trending live sessions videos and it will really help you for preparation of various exams so uh, chapter 1 is population uh, distribution density growth composition so it talks about spatial distribution of population like try to get an idea why uh, in one one region population is more one region the population is less and regions like climate terrain water minerals transport urbanization then regions of high medium and low population density components of uh, population growth and all that so that becomes important now analysis of various uh, characteristics uh, then you have different phases of population growth in india regional variations on growth challenges of adolescent population government measures mainly national youth policy to tackle the same then you have the population composition like analysis of various characteristics of population rural urban composition the role of migration in regulating it uh, linguistic classification as it is given in table 1.2 then religious composition as it is given in table 1.3 then distribution and try to get an idea about the occupational composition try to remember the facts which are given here and basically uh, whenever you are writing a mains answer or an essay type answer it will help you in that now census uh, like 2011 now it is outdated but still like that is the only census you will have for next 4 years it says only 40% population works which implies high dependency ratio high unemployment or underemployment in india but try to go through the latest figures of uh, economic survey so that will help you a lot chapter 2 talks about migration types causes and consequences of migration so try to read about the history of migration in india and uh, evolution of indian diaspora basis of enumeration of migration migrant population in census uh, four streams of internal migration their pattern pattern of international migration uh, both immigration emigration spatial variation regions of whether net in or out migrants what is happening then you have causes of migration try to understand various push and pull factors and why the reason for male versus female migration then you have lot of consequences which can be observed in economic social cultural political and demographic terms now it is very important to understand them clearly how migration affects both the source and the destination regions now like migration is and it will remain a very very hot topic for at least few years and almost every year it is asked either directly or indirectly and there are a lot of refugee crisis across the world like syrian crisis rohingya crisis etc please prepare it well chapter 3 deals with human development so read the first two pages to understand the meaning of development and various paradoxes related to it in the context of india get the latest human development report what is india's rank in it understand why the approach followed and what the indicators which are chosen in the report they are not the true mirror of the development sometimes people say global happiness index is much better sometimes analyzes the three indicators like economic attainment healthy life social empowerment in case of india socio political economic and historical reasons why india's rank is poor in hdi then you have population environment and development under the heading they focus on the role of civil society in development malthusian theory of population growth view of new malthusians environmentalists radical ecologists and finally the gandhian view of development and then chapter 4 is human settlements now if you are a geography optional student then i will strongly advise that you read this chapter but if you are not a geography optional student then it does not make sense for you to study okay it's not important just have a leisure read if you want and then chapter 5 is land resources agriculture so here land use categories so there are nine type of land use categories given here uh, just have a basic idea no need to remember them then land use changes in india so this is very very important so understand how the change in size and composition of the economy pressure on agricultural land has forced the land use pattern now land use changes for about nine categories in last five decades try to analyze them why it is happening then you have common property resource cpr it's not cardio pulmonary resuscitation and cprs and their significance cropping intensity cropping seasons what are the major crops grown in them then you have various types of farming like irrigated farming rain fed farming 
Now types of rain fed farming include dry land versus wet land farming, crops which are suitable for cultivation. Then food grains like next few pages will describe some important food grains. Now, all of these are very very important so you need to focus on climatic soil conditions which are required for their cultivation, uh, regions and states where they are grown, uh, top producing states, India status in the world. Now practice all the maps which shows the distribution of these crops if you want to get some extra marks so that will also help you. Uh, then agricultural development in India, try to understand the historical uh, context that is issues involved, policies, strategies followed since independence for agricultural development, focus on green revolution, achievements of green revolution, failures of green revolution. Now problems of Indian agriculture like understand each and every problem which is given here very well and why the measures to solve these problems failed, find out about current policies, initiative suggestions from internet and like in this year's mains essay paper for example the very first topic was farming has lost the ability to be a source of subsistence of majority of the farmers in india so this is technically direct directly if you have read this properly then we'll solve it now chapter 6 is water resources try to get an idea about the water crisis water resources sources of surface water various topographical hydrological other constraints in its utilization regions having high moderate and low usage of groundwater, water usage by various sectors, then demand of water for irrigation, like assess the need and importance of irrigation for agriculture in India, then pattern of well and tube well irrigation, consequence of over irrigation, overuse of groundwater, and reasons and extent of water pollution, deterioration of water quality, then you have water conservation and water management, like steps to control river pollution, efforts of CPS, CPCB, SPCB, and uh, legislative provisions, Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974, uh, Environment Protection Act of 1996, and recyclable and reuse of water, watershed management, uh, various concepts and methods which are involved here, uh, government programs such as Haryali, Niru Miru, Success Their Failure, rain, uh, Rainwater Harvesting Benefits, Case Study of Ralegaon Siddhi, ki, uh, Siddhi uh, which is the uh, Anna Hazare's village, and highlights of India's National Water Policy 2002. Then you have chapter 7 minerals and energy resources. So go through the types of minerals which are given in figure 7.1 and see the boxes to get an idea about the agencies which are involved in the exploration of minerals. Then you have distribution of minerals in India. So read about the three major mineral belts in India and the various minerals they are rich in. So for example ferrous includes iron, manganese, air, non-ferrous copper bauxite, non-metallic mica. So focus on their characteristics, usage, states, mines where they are found in abundance. And for energy sources, focus on the major coal belt of India, mines like Gondwana mines, Tertiary, then issues with coal mining, oil producing regions, location of refineries, reserves of natural gas, distribution of uranium, thorium, monocyte deposits, important nuclear plants, mechanism of generation, potential in India, various advantages of solar, wind, tidal, geothermal, bioenergy, and understand the strategies for conservation of mineral resources. Then chapter 8 is manufacturing industries, so different types of industries. Location of industries, it is very very important for mains like material power, market, capital, transport, labor, what are these factors which are required and major industries like iron and steel industries, cotton textile industries, like you have to study Tesco in iron and steel, Gujarat, Maharashtra belt, locational factor for cotton, sugar in especially Maharashtra, UP and southern states, then you have petrochemical industries, why they are concentrated in Maharashtra, Gujarat belt, then uh, knowledge about knowledge based industries. Uh, how come we have become software powerhouse of the world then objectives of new industrial policy LPG majors initiated and industrial regions in India so try to memorize the eight major industrial regions as they show up in the map in figure 8.13 then you have chapter 9 which is planning and sustainable development in Indian context so evolution of planning since independence planning commission various five year plans two approaches of planning sectoral planning regional planning regional imbalances targeted area development now under targeted area planning there are various programs like hill area development program, drought prone area program, many of them are no longer functioning also but try to get the basic data and what are their objectives, components, strategy etc. Then we have sustainable development so evolution of the concept of development and how it is contrasted with growth, limits to growth model, Brundtland report our common sustainable future okay uh, talks about sustainable development. Then you have meaning of the term sustainable development, understand what all sustainable development involves. You have to carefully read the case study of Indira Gandhi Canal Command area also. And then chapter 10 is transport and communication. So 
in this chapter uh, it becomes important sometimes they ask about infrastructure so we have road transport so facts about grand trunk road objectives and functions of national highways uh, basics of nhai its major projects that is the golden quadrilateral north south and east west corridors and various functions of border road organization now when it comes to railways just read the basic information about railways uh, three gauges of the railway konkan railway various issues committees and solutions to develop railways it has to be studied on internet now waterways the advantages of waterways various issues in the development of waterways basic information about five national waterways which are listed in table 10.4 so try to go through that as well then leisure read the rest of the chapter not much importance is given here try to make certain uh, notes of the facts if you can which are mentioned here then you have chapter 11 which talks about international trade so uh, this chapter must be studied along with its counterpart in the latest economic survey as the data and trends given here are almost a decade old so they are will not help you try to read through economic survey google etc so here they talk about composition of commodities in india's international trade india's trade relation with various countries uh, major trading blocks of the world and direction of the trade to where it is going finally like asean rcb all these becomes very very important eu and all that then major ports of india their hinterlands major composition of cargo handled significance various issues in the development and finally you have chapter 12 which talks about the geographical perspective on selected issues and problems so it talks about environmental pollution so it is obviously when heard the word environment and pollution comes together so it definitely means something big is going to happen so here it includes water pollution like causes of it like natural and human sources understand how they pollute water uh, various consequence of water pollution and then you have uh, no reading much of this and is not necessary then reasons and consequence of air pollution smog acid rain the so smog is basically like photochemical smog and different types of smog are there then you have acid rain like they can ask you which acids are involved answer is h2so4 hno3 hydrochloric acid and uh, sorry nitric acid and sulfuric acid h2so4 and hno3 then noise pollution what are the main sources above what 80 decibels up to it is considered tolerable above that it is definitely noise pollution and what are the major reasons for it urban waste disposal sources of solid waste what are the consequence of their improper disposal read the case study of dorala then rural urban migration very very important concept okay so push and pull factors and there is a case study of ramesh try to understand why the rural to urban migration happens and dharavi is a slum in mumbai so they have included it as case study and land degradation regions of land degradation various type of wastelands case study of jabua which is a tribal district in mp Uh, watershed management was successful here in reclaiming degraded land and it changed the economic landscape of the district so i hope uh, we have covered all the geography and crts whatever is important in them so please try to watch all the videos where i am talking about uh, the important geography concepts so thank you for watching this have an awesome day